Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 84. Um, It is Tuesday, March 24th, 2020. We're still in the midst of the coronavirus, self-isolation. Now, when you guys listen to this uh, podcast uh, 20 years from now, um, this was a time that we in the United States of America never thought we would ever experience. We read about it, we've heard about it, we've watched movies about it, but we never in our lives thought that we would be a part of this. It is crazy, it is just like a movie. Um, uh, It's called the coronavirus and uh, uh, man, (laughs) Google it. If Google is still around 20 years, (laughs) But uh, anyway, um, everything else is cool. People, hope you guys are doing well. Um, today I had to go out. I had no choice. I haven't, I, it wasn't, I've been staying in. Trust me. We've been staying in. We don't go anywhere. But then we get to a point where we have nothing. And we have to go out and grab what we can without hoarding. So we don't want to hoard. So we get just about enough to get us through a week or two. Uh, but then we have to run back out. Uh I stay in the in the car. Nothing different than when we go on a regular day. Andrew goes in there, wears the gloves. We try to be very careful. I stay in the car with Santana. Um, I didn't see that much difference. Then on, now I didn't go inside. Now all Angel tells me is that there's a lot of stuff that's missing. Like there's a lot of meats, especially. Uh, she was able to get water. She got. Like two cases, they're not the huge. We go and we get those great value uh, um, Walmart brands because it's like 42 you get for like three bucks. So we always grab a couple of those. We always have those on hand. They didn't have those. So the ones they had were the smaller ones. I don't know, 32 or 24. Don't remember. So we grabbed two of those. And uh, there was toilet paper. Not a lot, though. And it was the cheap brand. And, uh, um, and then uh, just some snacks, and, you know, some sodas, stuff like that. So, uh... I didn't, outside the parking lot, man, looked about as normal as ever. It was a rainy day today. Um, what was so crazy is that the pollen is really bad out there. And I, I mentioned it before. I never had allergies until I moved out here. I didn't even know what allergies were. I'm telling you, people always thought, even me, I thought, man, honestly, I thought I was sick. And I don't do doctors. So I was just like, okay, well, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to keep working. I'm going to keep reaching my goal until I collapse. Because what happens if I feel like if I go to the doctor and the doctor says, oh, well, you got six months to live. Well, guess what? I'm not going to live for those six months. I'm basically going to prepare to die and I'm not going to do anything. So I'd rather not know. I'd rather just if there's nothing you can do, then let me just hustle my ass off until the last day. Let me just that's what I enjoy. So let me do what I want to do. You know, I just feel that sometimes you hear shit like that and the stress and the idea of it uh, kills you before anything else. Um, but, um, but yeah, you know, it was, you know, so yeah, so I didn't really see, um, I didn't see that much of a difference, uh, in the, in the yard. Everybody was, I mean, in the lot parking lot, everybody was, uh, was still out there doing their thing. Um, uh, we're pretty much in for the rest of the, for at least for the rest of the week. And, um, we got everything we have, uh, man. Everything else is quiet. You know, I'm going online. I'm, you know, I know you guys are enjoying my TikToks. I'm still doing them. Thank you very much. Uh, I think the one I did today was kind of cool. <laughs> uh, I get up in the morning. I get up so early that everybody's asleep and it gives me a chance to, and I'll go online. I say, okay, I want to do one today for today. They're only 15 seconds. So, you know, I can do them pretty quick. You know, um, it's all about just having a, 
a really cool idea and then just executing it the right way so you get the, the right thing. I love doing them, man. I love watching them. Sometimes I get hooked and I watch them. I catch myself sometimes watching TikToks more than I read. And trust me, I'm a read. I love to read. Um, and um, and if you guys have ever seen Santana's, she's pretty good too. Her, is, her, her handle for TikTok is Tana M 2010 I don't know why it's 2010, because she was born 2011, but it's 2010. I think Erica had, my daughter had uh, set that one up for her. And, um, but check out her. She's actually pretty creative. Um, I recommend it for the kids. I, I love social media, people. I brought this up before. Look at what's going on right now. Just look at what's going on right now. Imagine. Ima I'll say imaginize. That's what Santana says. She says, imaginize. So imaginize that we didn't have social media and we were going through this shit right now. The only thing we would be able to, to hear about what's going on would be the news, which is like the worst place to listen to this stuff. Okay. And then we really wouldn't be, we would really wouldn't know what's happening to our friends and our distant family members, you know, you know, we'll be sitting home waiting to, for the phone to ring for, for someone that tells, yeah, so-and-so died. But then we go on social media and everybody's cool. Everybody's chilling. They're going about their business. They're being careful. They're, they're, they're not joking. I, I don't want to say that people are joking about it. No, no. But they're making fun of it. I don't have a problem with that. I really don't. I don't have a problem. Sometimes we have to make fun of tragic or uh, dire situations because we cannot stress can kill us faster than anything so I think by us putting light and I think we do it for ourselves but it goes out there for other people you know I mean should I be there making some funny ass uh, TikTok videos no what should I be doing should I be just staying home Watching the news with my, you know, wrapped in a freaking plastic bag with, you know, gallons of sanitizer around me and face mask on my whole family. Like, is that the way we're supposed to do this? You know, so with social media, we're able to look, I'm able to look and say, okay, my family's good. Okay, my daughter's good. My sister's good. My in-laws are good. My cousins are good. My friends are good. My grandkids are, are good. My daughter-in-law is good. Everybody's good. I can see that everybody's good. Thank God. And then they kind of reach out and we see people that are not good. And we can pray for these people. You know, we can say, okay, so-and-so is not doing good. But now we can watch them. And then when they make a turn for the best, it gives us hope. It makes us feel good, you know. And then if some people are, are making jokes and they're using bras as masks or they're coming up with these memes with hazmat suits and hey so be it man we cannot be a nation in terror man we can't we can't you know we're not ignoring it we know where we acknowledge the danger we're not fearless of it meaning we're not we're not saying, oh, we're not scared of it. I think it's. I think being scared is a, a safety mechanism. Think about it. If you if you're not scared, uh, walking through bad neighborhoods, you know something can happen. By you being scared of walking through a neighborhood, most likely you're not going to walk through that neighborhood, or you're gonna you're gonna be prepared, or you're not going to walk alone. Okay, being scared. Is a safety mechanism. It's used to say it's used to protect us. You know, somebody's scared of snakes. Yeah, well, why? Because snakes bite and they could kill you. You know, people are scared of rats. Why? Because rats can bite you and they could kill you. <laughs> I hate rats, man. I'll, I'll handle snakes more than rats at any time. I can't even look at rats. I'm real, definitely afraid of them. Guys, read my books. Freestyle for life, freestyle. And yes, yes, y'all all have rats in them. And you could tell, and I never noticed that Angel knows. She goes, well, all, your, all your books have rats in it. Because rats are, are they're, they're, they're a big fear in my life. So I will never own one either, you know. I don't even like mice. I don't like hamsters. I don't like gerbils. You can have them. They're cute for you. I will never hurt them. 
but I don't want them and I'm not going to pick them up and I'm not going to hold them. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But, but yeah, fear is a safety mechanism for all of us, but being, having that fear is okay. It's okay. But being scared, like being terrified, I think that's where we have to be careful because sometimes you can't think right when you're scared. You see it all the time. You see, you know, in movies, movies portray it all the time. Someone just gets so scared that they run. They don't see where they're running. You got the, the white girl with the blonde hair, you know, you know, something's coming after her. Instead of her running to her neighbor's house, she's going to run through the woods. What the hell? <laughs> you know? So, you know, being scared like that, you know, doesn't always allow you to make the right decision. <laughs> so, you know, so it's good that we do something to alleviate that fear, to make us sensible, to put a little light in it so we have hope. Because hope matters, man. Hope plays a big role. You know, you know, nobody ever wants to know that, hey, this is the end. I always need hope. I need some sort of hope at all times. You know? Uh, business is going bad. I need hope. My car's not working. I need some sort of hope. You know? Someone in my family's ill or I'm ill. I need some sort of hope. There has to be hope. Hope can get me through years of whatever. You know, why am I not, I, I'm, an, I'm an entrepreneur. Why? Because I have hope. Anybody who's known me long enough or known me for years have know that I have always been the way I am. I've always been an entrepreneur. I've always wanted to do my own thing. And it's just the freedom of doing it. It's not, oh, you just don't want to work. You're just lazy. Nah, I'm not lazy. I work a lot and I do things that most people will not or cannot do. And I and I do it sometimes, you know, okay, I can make really good money. But then sometimes I could go months and the money trickles to the point where if you if you average it out, I made about three dollars an hour. So I could get but I don't stop. I keep going. Why? Because I got hope. I got hope that eventually something's gonna click. Something's going to click to the point that's going to catapult me to a whole other level, you know? So, you know, hope is very important. It's important for all of us. And I think um, everyone should always grasp on to some sort of hope and always keep in mind that things will always get better, you know? So, you know, you think about it like this. I think back in the days they were talking about things like the Spanish flu, okay? And... Um, and I forgot why they called it the Spanish flu. I think they called it the Spanish flu because it was going on during the Spanish war. I don't remember. I don't want to I don't want to put that out there, but it's not from it's not Spanish. So so you guys can do your own research on that. We got Google, so that's fine. Um figure it out. Um But if you look at the history of like the Spanish flu and stuff, um it, it looked really crazy. You know, I'm actually going to pull it up on my computer right now. I just want to see something because uh, Spanish flu, also known as the 1918 flu pandemic, was an unusually deaf, deadly influenza pandemic lasting from January 18th to December, from the January 1918 to December 1920. It affected, infected, infected 500 million people, about a quarter of the world's population at the time. Holy smoke. How crazy is that? And when you look at the pictures, like, um, it, it, it's crazy. You know, all you see is like back-to-back -back beds. And it was like, wow. And then now, now look at this. They did not have... Now, eventually, it subsided or whatever the case. Now, I didn't read the history of it, but apparently, it's over with. <laughs> no, we don't have that right now, you know? Um, but think about it back then. They didn't have not even a fraction of what we have today in medical technology, in the ability to communicate. Now, think about this. This is crazy now, all right? 1918, okay? I don't even think they had the, they didn't have the television yet, right? Maybe the radio? I don't know, man. I'm like, I'm, I'm lost on some of that stuff. But think about it. 
how was they how are they communicating like right now it's all over the news it's all over the internet it's like it's other people who are telling you stay home you know save lives you know i'm going to stay home so you have regular citizens like myself who are telling people stay home this wasn't happening these people did not know this these people were infecting each other they were contaminating mm-hmm. each other their own selves and their, their kids and and not knowing it not knowing that i didn't read mm-hmm. the history of this i should um but i didn't and um but it's i mean you look at the pictures they're all in black and white so that alone makes it real creepy looking um and they're just showing you know uh it's uh yeah, I'm looking at it right now. I mean, nurses. Now, remember what they said. They said once this thing starts getting the nurses and the doctors sick, that's when we have to worry. Because those are the people that have to take care of us. Now what? How is this done? How do we do this? You know? So we're just praying that um, that we get past all of this. And we have hope because the Spanish flu Though it took a couple of years, remember it took a couple of years with them, without without any communications. They had. I'm trying to think how the hell were they telling people? Like if this thing was covering like most of the nation, like how were people finding out? You know what were they doing? Okay, fine. So one hospital would send a telegram to the next hospital to let them know to be prepared. But how are they letting the citizens know what they're doing? A newspaper. Not everybody read the newspaper, you know, and then how much information was there, you know, and was the information accurate or were they just trying to sell newspapers like, well, you know, think about what they went through. So we are at least fortunate that we're in a good time uh, for something like this to happen. Now, let's see how we handle it. Let's see what happens. And let me tell you something now. If we are able to have this country and this world, actually the planet, because I'm talking about our country, but my, my daughter's in Germany. She's not in this country. So I'm concerned with the world. I would be anyway, whether she was there or not. Okay. But if we are able to tackle this, if the world is able to tackle this, okay, I think it's going to become a huge, huge plus for us. Because God forbid if this ever happens or something similar, we're prepared. And the nations are prepared. And they know how to move on this quickly. You know, people say, okay, quarantine. Everybody self-isolate. Boom. Everybody knows what to do. And I think after this also, people are going to be a very more, a lot more conscious. I know I am. Yeah, I know I'm going to stock up on certain mm-hmm. things that people have been telling me to stock on, up on for years and I don't listen none of us listen you know so I know I'm gonna I want to have some mask and I might want to have our own hazmat suits I wonder if they got hazmat as a 6x hmm I have to think about that I might have to make my own <laughs> but uh anyway uh um yeah they call it a tent <laughs> a hazmat tent anyway um but yeah, so we get through this, man. It's going to be, you know, uh, I think we'll be home free for a while, you know. And I think this will probably become like a regular drill. I think n- a lot of people are not going to be caught off guard. I could see me, you know, storing more stuff away. You know, I you know, I see what they talk about, you know, have, a, you know, a few months. A lot of them say six months. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, we don't have six months worth of stuff here. So, you know, things could get really, really rough. I don't know. So, but anyway, you know, uh, I guess that's what they call live and learn, right? But uh, when you guys get a chance, man, check out uh, about the Spanish flu because they're saying that that is uh, the closest to what's going on now. You know, and they're showing that people coughing on each other and it's really crazy, man. Really crazy, so... Anyway, uh, that's pretty much it, my peoples. Um, yeah, I know I spoke a while ago, but I think the coronavirus, we're going to have to talk about it, man. It's like, what else am I talking about? I'm not doing anything else but listening to this crap. So, but listen, continue to stay safe. You know, stay at home if you can. Um, 
try to get gloves, try to get a mask. People are not going to get offended if you don't want to shake their hands, if you don't want to, you know, uh, check the elderly. Sometimes they can't go out there. Don't let them go out there. Um, watch the kids. Uh, the, the, the elderly, if you have people next door that might need something from the store, you might want to, or family member, you might want to check up on that. Make sure they're good. Um, and just keep yourself and your family still. And try to enjoy yourself. You know, figure out something you guys can do. Join me in some TikToks. Let me, I like to see them. So, all right, people. Listen, until tomorrow night, be safe. God bless. And freestyle for life. Good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.